everybody, could you use some good news? Well, let's start with this. Scientists in Florida have announced a new drug candidate that seems capable of blocking all strains of HIV. Research led by scientists at the Scripps Research Institute's Florida campus and published in the journal Nature shows the drug candidate AAV expressed ECD4IG, love that catchy name, is able to block all known strains of HIV-1, HIV-2, and SIV, which is the simian immunodeficiency virus. It was also shown to work against larger viral loads than are typical for human transmission, and one injection of the drug remained effective for eight months. The drug functions as an entry inhibitor, binding to two sites on the surface of HIV, preventing the virus from latching on to a host cell. It's delivered via a harmless genetically engineered virus that binds with muscle cells and produces more of the HIV-blocking protein, meaning this drug could provide long-term protection against HIV infection with a single injection. Here's hoping this study is just the beginning of the good news we'll be hearing from the HIV research front in 2015. Next up, a Missouri University professor has devised new ways of cleaning wastewater that are more efficient and more effective than current methods. Professor John Min Wang of Missouri University of Science and Technology has actually developed two new technologies for producing fresh water from wastewater. The first is a refinement of a method currently being used using oxygen to aerate water treatment tanks, which encourages microorganisms to consume more waste. Dr. Wong discovered that a lower concentration of oxygen allows the microorganisms to live longer, meaning they clean more water at less cost. Dr. Wong's second technology is called A3O, which stands for Alternating Anaerobic Anoxic Oxic. It removes nutrient pollutants better and more efficiently than standard methods. Oh, and he's also developed an anaerobic digester that removes sludge from wastewater and converts it to biogas that can be harvested as an energy source. At the moment, these various methods are capable of rendering wastewater suitable for irrigation, but Dr. Wong is optimistic they will eventually be able to recycle wastewater into potable freshwater. That could be very good news for the environment and for the estimated 750 million people worldwide without reliable access to safe water. And finally, here's something for the language nerds out there. A new study may have determined when and where the common ancestor of modern Indo-European languages first appeared. There's a diversity of opinion as to the place and time of origin of what's known as the Proto-Indo-European language, or PIE, but the model with the most support is called the Kurgan Hypothesis, which proposes that PIE was first spoken by the Kurgan people, who lived on the Pontic Caspian Steppe, which reaches from the northwest shores of the Black Sea through Moldova and Ukraine, across Russia to Kazakhstan. This new study, authored by linguists at UC Berkeley and to be published next month in the journal Language, analyzed data from 150 languages and found that PIE most likely originated on the steppe between 5,500 and 6,500 years ago. Though the Kurgan hypothesis is accepted by many, this is one of the first papers to show that it is supported by statistical phylogenetic analysis. PIE, the language of the Kurgans, it seems, was the common ancestor of all Indo-European languages, which are spoken today by nearly three billion people worldwide. A new drug is capable of blocking all known strains of HIV. A Missouri professor creates potentially revolutionary new water cleaning technologies, and a new study sheds light on the origins of Indo-European language. That's the good news. Okay, I see.